The last group of fungi that I want to tell you about today are lichens, or as they say in the UK, lichens. That just sounds weird to me, so I'm going to call them lichens. Uh, lichens are mutualistic symbioses between a fungus called the mycobiont and a photosynthetic organism uh, called the photobiont. And unlike mycorrhizas, which are also mutualisms between fungi and uh, photosynthetic partner, uh, the photosynthetic partner in lichens are either green algae or cyanobacteria or sometimes both can be involved. Um, so are they mutualistic or are they not? The, the debate focuses around whether or not the, uh, the green algae are actually getting a benefit from the fungus. Uh, some argue that you can culture the green algae independently. They don't have to grow in lichenized associations. So maybe it's not entirely in their benefit that they should be uh, uh, involved in these intimate relations with fungi. But I would say that uh, you typically don't find green algae growing in the habitats that you would find them in. Uh, unless they have a fungal partner there. So they are able to expand their their range, their habitat, a lot by having that protection from desiccation, from drying out uh, by the fungi. So uh, most of the lichens are ascomycetes, uh, but not all. There are some basidio lichens as well. Uh, most ascomycetes that are... Um, lichenized are found within a few clades, but not all of them do. This is something that has evolved multiple times independently in the um, in the fungi. And altogether there's about 20,000 described species of lichens, uh, lichenized fungi that are out there. So why do we talk about them now with the fungi rather than when we were talking about green algae and cyanobacteria? Uh, the answer is that the majority of the diversity is in the form of the fungi. So what determines the shape of a lichen, uh, which enables us to identify uh, a lichen as being a particular species, has to do with the growth of the fungus. And as it turns out, those 20,000 species, uh, those are 20,000 species of fungi, whereas the number of uh, green algae and cyanobacteria, it's a lot fewer. I remember reading at some point, it was maybe about six different species of green algae that were found in uh, lichens. That number I, I'm not entirely sure about, but it's a very small number compared to the number of fungi that are involved in these associations. So that's why we mention them now rather than um, back when we were talking about cyanobacteria or green algae. So You've definitely seen lichens out there if you've ever been outside in the world. Uh, you may have seen them and thought they looked like mosses, but now you should know better. You should know that mosses are, are uh, actually plants, embryophytes, whereas lichens are these associations between uh, fungi and green algae. So uh, that color, that greenish color, that sort of vertigris or uh, uh, tarnished copper color, very typical of something that you find in lichens. Uh, so here's an example, and those dark spots in there are the uh, apothecia, or where acai are produced in this particular uh, lichen. But the color can be a little bit more yellowish, greenish, and the form can be less sort of oppressed to the surface of whatever it's growing on. It can be more fruticose. Uh, like you see here, growing more three-dimensionally and bushy. Uh, or here you can see one, this is like a, a reindeer moss that's uh, very, very bushy. Uh, sometimes the apothecia can be more uh, orangish. And that's about it for the lichens and for the fungi. So our next uh, group of organisms to talk about are the animals.